Okay, we gotta talk about how we can use fruit to burn fat. Like we, I feel like somewhere along the keto journey, the low carb journey, we became uh, obsessed with avoiding fruit. And I wanna bring fruit back into the conversation because there are uh, some incredible fruits and I'm gonna show you which ones, I'm gonna show you why they're so good and I'm gonna quote the research and why they can really help be a pivotal part of your fasting lifestyle and help you burn fat. So let's dive into the science. Let me explain the why, because remember when you understand the why, it really helps you make smart decisions for you. So let's, let's dive into that. So here's what I just want big picture again. We're back at teaching, a, I'm teaching you a fasting lifestyle. So in Fast Like a Girl, I talked about how we have a time when we don't eat. We call that the fat burning system or the fasting window. And there's a time when we do eat and we call that the eating window or the sugar burner system. And if we wanna lose weight, if we wanna stay metabolically healthy, the name of the game is to learn how to switch in and out of these two states. Now, what's interesting about the fasting window is that so many of you, and you can put it in the comments, if you've lost weight by just tacking on a fasting window to the foods you were already eating. And so many people, once they've figured out, oh, wow, if I just compress my food into one eating window and leave a longer period for fasting, I actually can lose weight more effort effortlessly. And put, again, put in the comments if that's you. But the part of the fasting conversation that I'm really trying to bring to you all now is this eating window because it's just as important as the fasting window for your metabolic health. So we wanna make sure that we master both of these windows, both of these metabolisms so that you can burn fat effortlessly, stay metabolically healthy. But remember when you're metabolically healthy, your hormones are healthy too. That goes for both men and women. So those two systems are interchange. They really connect. Metabolic health goes off, hormonal health will go off. Hormonal health goes off, metabolic system will go off. So they, we can't, we can't, we have to have a conversation about bo regulating both of these sy systems to bring you optimal health. Okay, with that, let's dive into the four fruits. Now the first one, and this one is the one that I, I just, we keep hearing over and over again. I did a, a, a really interesting Resetter podcast interview with Jim Quick on the, this and the power of, of this food on our brain, and it really is the blueberry. And the interesting thing about blueberry is why it's so good for burning fat is it really is one of those fruits that keeps your blood sugar stable. And it does this two ways. One, it's all berries, you know, it's not just the blueberry, but the blueberry is like the hero berry. Um, all berries are high in antioxidants. They're low in, gl in glucose, so they're not gonna spike your glucose um, as high as some of the other fruits that we'll talk about. And they're high in fiber. So whenever we add fiber into the picture, we really create a system that doesn't allow for a really big blood sugar spike. So we want to be able to, the more fiber we bring in in these fruits that have a little glycemic response, the less you're going to see your glucose go up and the easier you're going to be able to metabolic switch over into the fat burning system. So I love it because of this fiber uh, sugar ratio. But beyond that, was, and this was an interesting study, and this is for my men. So hopefully I haven't, I haven't lost, put in, the, put in the comments if you're a man and you listen to my channel here. I'm trying to bring hormonal health for both men and women into the, all of my conversations. So here you go. Here's one for the men. And it was a 2018 study that found overweight men who ate blackberries, also another fiber-filled low glycemic berry, um, that they had showed greater fat oxidation. That means they were able to break down fat easier and they showed increased insulin sensitivity. So, and, and this was really interesting because blackberries, I mean, I, I put in the comments how many of us eat blackberries every day, but it was specifically done on blackberries. And uh, the study went on to say that other berries can be good as well. Strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, cranberries, 
As always, we always want to make sure that those are organic, especially with strawberries. Those are heavily sprayed um, uh, fruits. But berries, what, when you see a berry, I want you to think, ooh, that has a great glucose or sugar ratio to fiber. It's not going to elevate my blood sugar in a really high way. That's the benefit of berries. And blueberries specifically are great. The antioxidant profile are great for the, for the brain. And you can go listen to the whole thing I did on blueberries and superfoods with Jim Quick. It was on the Resetter podcast. My team will probably put a link in there. Okay, second one. This is one of my favorite. And we don't think of it as a fruit, but it has a seed. And that is the avocado. There is no doubt if you put avocado with every single meal, it is high in fiber. It has great fat profile and it will stabilize your blood sugar. And I'll tell you one thing that I love about it is it comes in a little bowl. It's got its own little bowl here. So you can put something inside that to make a really fun meal that you eat from. And it comes with its own little skin. So, you know, grab one and take it on the go. Um, and it's, it's got a protective outer skin. It's almost like nature knew what the modern world was going to be like and decided to provide us a little extra fruit that could, we could take on the go and we could use as, a, as plateware. So there you go. But what's interesting that I love, uh, you know, beyond the, the, um, the fat content of an avocado is that it also has a huge anti-inflammatory effect. So I have an avocado every single day, just using it to bring down the inflammation that can occur from the modern world or overuse. Um, and then I like the fat because it stabilizes my blood sugar. Personally for me, and I've brought this to you all many times, is it's one of my go-to foods for breaking a fast because you come in with this powerful nutrient, you stabilize blood sugar, and so therefore you don't end up boom boomeranging back into food. So, okay. Number three, and this one's going to surprise you, and we got to talk about some nuance here, and that is the orange. Okay, I am not saying orange juice. You can go look at some videos I've done on orange juice. I have, uh, I, I have a pet peeve with orange juice, especially in the morning. It couldn't think of anything worse for our, our metabolic system than orange juice in the morning. But the orange by itself actually has some interesting properties. Now, the first is it also is fiber filled and they did a measurement. I, I thought this was really interesting. They did a measurement where they, they call it a satiety score, where they look to see what foods give us the most satisfaction of, of feeling full. So, so satiety is just a fancy word for, yeah, that filled me up. But I don't feel like eating anything else. And the orange scored what they, they gave it a rank and it scored a 202 as one of the most filling fruits that were tested. And so when we look at the orange from a metabolic fat burning standpoint is because it kicks that satiety in and it kills that hunger, it can be a beautiful addition to maybe a salad. I've done this before even with like grapefruit too, where I'll cut it up and I'll put little segments in my salad. You can put it with avocado. They go really well together and put with some greens. Some I talked a lot about how greens support the strobilome that breaks down estrogen. Greens are great for, especially bitter greens, are great for supporting liver health. So you can take a, a bunch of dandelion greens and spring mix and, and radicchio and fennel, chop them all up into a salad, and then cut some oranges and some avocados in and my God, now you've got like an incredible meal for breaking down hormones and you've got an incredible meal for stabilizing blood sugar and helping you burn more fat because you can get over into that fat burning fasting window much quicker. So orange is good because you feel full afterwards. The last one that I want to talk about is the apple. And this is interesting. So the apple was the second most filling fruit on the satiety index. So oranges were first, apples were second. Just so you know, like if you are in a pinch, let's think about how we use this satiety index for our benefit. You're in a pinch, you're like walking out the door, you're like, oh, I'm hungry, what do I need? Well, guess what? If you're gonna grab some fruit, these two are gonna be the best for filling you up and making it so that you don't wanna keep eating, which also is a beautiful way to burn fat. 
But this was interesting. So a, 20, a 2009 study showed that people who ate an apple before a meal spontaneously consumed less food during that meal and it ended up in a fat burning state. So we're back at the fiber game. So when we've got fiber filled fruits like this, what we don't get is as big of a, a, a glucose spike. We kill the hunger hormone. We have a longer satisfaction with uh, like these foods that we eat. So we don't want to keep eating and it allows us to keep blood sugar down so we can get over into that fat burning place a lot better. So, and I'll tell you a big snack that I do all the time is I take apples. I, my personal favorite, I didn't have one here. My personal favorite are pippins, the green juicy like pippin apples. I have a local farmer that brings them at only one time a year and I love them. She also has a hybrid one called a Mutsu. That's incredible. It's a cross between a pippin and a golden delicious. I'm a huge apple fan. And I cut them and I will often either put raw cheese on if you do dairy or I'll put some cashew butter or almond butter. And literally some days when I'm working a lot in the morning, I'll go into my kitchen, I'll cut open an apple, slap some nut butter on there, and that will be enough. One full apple cut into pieces with nut butter is enough for me to break my fast and keep going throughout the day and it, I don't have to sit down and eat a full meal. So I like it as a real convenient breakfast meal to curb the hunger, but also to bring in some of the fiber and nutrients that are needed so that I don't just keep eating for the next several hours during my eating window. So let me know if that helps. But the point of this video is A, to help you navigate fruit. I wanna bring fruit back into the equation. In Fast Like a Girl, I talked about how I, I, the, my version of keto is ketobiotic. The way I phrase that is ketobiotic because I want the biotic, I want us to remember that we don't ever wanna go so low, low carb that we leave things like fruit out of the equation. We've, nature provided us some incredible resources for balancing hormones and burning fat. And when we don't have a diet rich in fruit, we're missing key antioxidants, we're key, missing key nutrients that keeps us functioning at our best. So there you go. If you and I were standing in line at the grocery store and you were like, hey, what's your favorite four fit, fruits for burning fat? These would be it. And now you have the science and the knowledge to back it. So again, put in the comments which one's your favorite, which one you like to use. Great for breaking your fast. I really, really love these for a break fast meal. Okay, fruits and diabetes. How can we match those together? And I also want to point out that a lot of you that go into low carb diets, you start to fear fruit. And I want to bring back fruit for you because anything that the planet made, that anything that's coming from the ground is there's a reason that it's on our planet and it is useful to our bodies. And fruit is one of them. There is a place for fruits. But if you have any metabolic imbalances, if you're diabetic, if you know your hemoglobin A1C is really high, if you're trying to get yourself out of insulin resistance, I know that for many of you watching my channel, it becomes quite easy to avoid fruit. But I don't want you to miss out on all the incredible antioxidants and polyphenols and all the incredible benefits that fruit can give you. So let's just do it in a very metabolically smart way. So here we go. And, and there's 17 of them. Are you ready? Here we go. First thing I want you to realize is that every food, but let's, let's, we're just keeping this to fruit, has a measurement of what it will do to your blood sugar. So when you eat that food, we know how high is it going to spike your blood sugar. And that increase in blood sugar is called a glycemic index. So all foods have been given this glycemic glycemic rating. And so when we look at somebody who's trying to overturn insulin resistance, when we look at somebody who's trying to improve their metabolic uh, flexibility and their whole metabolic system, if we look at somebody who's pre-diabetic or diabetic, we have to bring in this conversation of the glycemic index. So Unfortunately, some of the fruits, like the tropical fruits, which by the way, I'm a fan of for progesterone building. I'm not a fan of for metabolic uh, flexibility long-term. I feel like for women, we should bring it in to periodically those tropical fruits to increase pr progesterone. But as a, a fruit that you would eat on a regular basis, it's a no for me. Um, I only go into bananas, mangoes, papayas if I'm trying to raise progesterone and I'll do a splash of those. And then I go back to these 
17 fruits I'm gonna talk about now because those fruits are just so high on the glycemic index. Here is the first one, and it really is a category, but I'll break it down in because it's got some really interesting pieces to it. You can never, ever, ever go wrong with a berry. Berries are amazing. Raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. Uh, my farmer's market in the springtime, there's like a two week period uh, where they've got a, wa a wall of berries, my favorite. So you can never go wrong with a berry. And remember that when you cook it, so like if you put it in a pie or, um, you know, you try to make like a, any kind of sauce or my son the other day was taking pomegranates and reducing it into a reduction sauce. Anytime you start to cook with it, you pull some of the, you pull some of those nutrients out. So I really it would prefer in order to get the benefits that I'm going to talk about here with berries is that you are using them raw and that they're organic. They're not sprayed with pesticides because pesticides are an endocrine disruptor. So raspberries is the first berry. It's the lowest um, in sugar and it's incredibly high in fiber. So remember when we're doing low carb diet, we're looking at the net carbs and a net carb is your total carb minus the fiber. So when we look at a net carb of a raspberry, the net carb is very low because it has so much fiber. So it'll slow down that absorption of blood sugar, which is why it can work for a diabetic. Second thing that we have to think about is that it's a good source of polyphenols. And polyphenols, remember, are feeding your microbiome. So you got this little, these little pets inside your gut. They make you serotonin, they balance your blood sugar, they improve your immune system. They're like little, I know as, as sad as it, and gross maybe as it sounds, but they're, they're bugs, they're, they're, they're alive and they're in your gut and they want food. And if you feed them, they get really happy and they make you a lot of wonderful neurochemicals. So what we know about raspberries, those little bugs in your, in your gut love them. And so you're gonna make all the neurotransmitters that the gut can make, you're gonna improve your immune system. Um, it has even been shown to slow aging raspberries and polyphenols have been shown to low, slow down aging and bring down inflammation. Okay, number two, strawberries. So strawberries are really low in sugar, which is great, but they have two other things, and this is why I put them on the list. They're high in vitamin C, which is really important for hormonal production. You gotta have enough vitamin C, but they're also really high in potassium. Okay, my fasters out there, I want you to keep in mind that when we go into fasted states, potassium is one of those, those minerals that we deplete. And one of the challenges with low potassium can be restless legs. So those of you who get kind of fidgety, can't relax your body, sometimes that's a, just as simple as a low potassium. And then you put yourself in a fasted state and all of a sudden the restless leg kind of syndrome sort of appears in a deeper way. Well, strawberries, when you're in your eating window, can really help with that. Number three, blackberries. Now, what's superior about blackberries for all berries is they're very high in fiber. In fact, of all the berries I'm telling you, blackberries are the highest in fiber. So they're gonna really stabilize your, your blood sugar. For me, that's my favorite, one of my outside of a wall of berries, my favorite is blackberries. I put it in Greek yogurt, love it. It's, it's a very common um, dessert for me, also really good in fiber. Okay, the, the last berry that I wanna talk about before I move on to other fruits is the blueberry. And the blueberry, if you're not familiar with how powerful the blueberry is, it's really good for your brain because it increases blood flow to your brain. So because of its ability, Ability to increase blood flow, it helps with brain function and heart health. Go check out the um, incredible podcast I did with Jim Quick. We walked through many different uh, superfoods, and, and number two was blueberry for brain power. I, I got I have blueberries all the time in my refrigerator. Often that's my snack. Um, I sometimes I'll even break my fast with it. But blueberries are incredible superfood. Once we move out of the berry category, we got to move into an, another category of fruits, and that's called citrus fruits. And citrus fruits are also very low in sugar, which is amazing. So they're low on that glycemic index, which is why they work for diabetics. It's why they work um, for or people who are metabolically challenged right now. So, I, and when I say, it's really interesting, when I say citrus fruits, I think most people think oranges and they think orange juice. I am not recommending orange juice. In fact, if you go and you look at my past videos, I did a whole video on why I hate orange juice. It is such concentrated sugar. 
but oranges have so much fiber in them and so many antioxidants in them. It's a, and they also, oranges are great for making estrogen, by the way, for my women out there, my post, my, my peri and postmenopausal women. So oranges is great. Grapefruits are great. Uh, lemons, limes, clementine, we are, and tangerines. They're phenomenal. I know when my kids were in grade school, we used to put those little clementines in their, um, in their bag all the time because it was so easy to peel, so easy to carry, and really, really yummy. And all of these are really high in vitamin C. Remember vitamin C again, you need vitamin C to make hormones, you need vitamin C for your immune system. Third category of food. This is literally one of my favorite. I'm gonna share with you my favorite food on the planet, but it's my favorite fruits. So stone fruits are really low on the glycemic index, which is great. They're high in fiber. We also have science showing that they improve circulation, so they're good at lowering blood pressure. So specifically, the best stone fruits to, to, go, to eat are peaches, nectarines, and plum. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about when you're like, if you're like me and you're at the farmer's market and you're trying to decide if something is high in sugar or low in sugar, if you buy something that's just a little bit green, like my favorite fruit, which could be my favorite food, is a white nectarine, and I like it a little crunchy and I like it a little green. And because because of that, it's not it's not as high in sugar. It won't raise my blood sugar as high. When you eat stone fruit and it's like dripping out of your mouth, yeah, that's, that's yummy. But that more, the longer that stone fruit ripens, the more sugar builds inside of it. So if you can get a little bit green, some of these peaches and nectarines, even some plums, if they're a little tart, like a green plum is really tart. If you can get some of those tart uh, stone fruits, the glycemic index will be lower. Okay, I got a, two more categories of food. The next one is my absolute favorite, and it's an avocado. Okay, wait, I, I thought we were talking about fruits. Avocados have a pit in them, which makes them a fruit. Anything that has a pit in is, or a seed is a fruit, technically. So gosh, av avocados are the best fat on the planet. It's also superfood for the brain. Uh, Jim Quick and I unpacked the avocado on the Resetter podcast interview I did with him. Um, it's uh, amazing for stabilizing blood sugar. So it can it can act a little sweet. You know, it's it's interesting. I, I'll tell you one of my favorite things to break my fast with is uh, an avocado with some sauerkraut. So it has a little bit of sweetness to it. I know if you have if you've been eating a high sugar diet, you might disagree with me. But once you pull sugar out, you'll start to see that there is a, a beautiful sweetness in an avocado. Um, the the fat is good fat, so it's really good for your brain. It's great for helping your liver make um, healthy cholesterol. Um, and it has 10 grams of fiber. It's really high in fiber. Remember, we gotta bring fiber up to feed the microbes in the gut, but also to stabilize blood sugar. I, I hope you don't fear the avocado. It's like one of my favorite of all favorite. In fact, I've mentioned this before. Um, Tom Bilyeu on Impact Theory asked me if I could only bring one food on a desert island, what would it be? And I said avocados. The last category, which is really interesting, and I'm gonna give you some fun ways to look at this food, is tomatoes. So if you can make some guacamole and put some tomatoes in it, you're gonna get a double whammy of some sweetness stabilizing your blood sugar. But I'll tell you my favorite way to eat a tomato. And I, I, I only know the company that does it. I know we have a lot of great chefs out here that could probably figure out how to make this, but it is fermented salsa. Wise Goat, you can, go, you can go check them out, has the best fermented salsa on the planet. So if you are a fermenter and you know how to ferment, Try fermenting salsa. And now you're getting that good bacteria, which is gonna stabilize blood sugar. And what we know about tomatoes is that it's not only an anti-inflammatory, especially if you add in some jalapeno, um, but if you do like a, a guacamole with a strong tomato, some avocado, and some jalape jalapenos, you're bringing inflammation down, you're stabilizing blood sugar, you're bringing fiber up, and jalapenos, have capsium in it and that speeds up your metabolism. So there's so much to unpack here. And what, I, what I'm hoping you're seeing, and I know if you just stumbled upon, this is your first video uh, on my channel, welcome. And what I'm trying to show you all is how to master these two metabolisms we have. When I wrote Fast Like a Girl, I was really focused on teaching you how to master the fat burning uh, metabolism because so many people don't even know about that. 
When I do a video like this, what I'm here to help you do is master the sugar burner system. There's two metabolisms to master. So when we look at, at food as medicine, it is absolutely medicine. It should be our first level of medicine. We got to go to these foods and go, okay, when I'm eating guacamole with a spicy jalapeno in it, I'm not just in delighting my taste buds and getting some dopamine, but I'm bringing inflammation down. I'm stabilizing blood sugar. I'm feeding my microbiome. I'm improving my metabolism and all of that fits under the sugar burner system. Food is that powerful. So as always, I hope that helps. I don't want you to fear fruit. Um, I want you to bring fruit back into your life, but I want you to be really smart about it. So here's what I want to do because I love looking at your comments. In the comments, I want you to tell me of all those things, which one's your favorite? What's your favorite fruit? Uh, I'm excited to see what everybody says. And as always, thank you all for sharing my videos and for engaging with me in the comments. We are more powerful together. I'm so happy that these are helping. And yes, we need to look at food as medicine. Sometimes we do a lot of fasting on this channel, and now it's time to make sure that you master food. So I got another book for you. It's called Eat Like a Girl. You will now know for your feminine body how to metabolically switch. I hope it helps. Okay, Dr. Mindy here, and I wanna talk with you guys specifically today about where the heck does fruit fit into your keto diet? Now, I know this question was asked on Instagram. I know those of you who are following our community page, you also asked this question. So I wanna make sure that I did a specific video of when you should incorporate fruits in your keto diet and when you shouldn't, okay? So I have three times that I wanna encourage you to add fruits into your diet, your keto diet, and I'm gonna have, I have two scenarios where I'm gonna say no fruit for you. So stay tuned through this whole video because I'm gonna walk you through the ins and outs of fruit and keto. Okay, so let's start with when should you add this in? So there are three times I would recommend that you turn to fruits and you add them into your keto diet. Number one, first time, when you know you need to feed your good gut bacteria. So I've done a lot of videos on good gut bacteria. They are incredibly helpful for building neurotransmitters, making neurotransmitters like GABA that calm our brain, or dopamine that gives us joy, or melatonin that helps us sleep. So if you've been doing the keto diet for a while and you're feeling kind of anxious, you're not sleeping well, um, and maybe you're not experiencing joy at the level that you used to experience it, it's quite possible that your neurotransmitters are deficient and those that comes from the good bacteria in your gut. So you're gonna wanna turn to some of these fruits and we'll, and we'll talk about which ones here in, the mom, in a moment. Second time that I would encourage you to look at fruits to add into your keto diet are when you're trying to balance your hormones. Now this is tricky, so let me start off by talking to you if you're a perimenopausal woman. As we hit 40, our uh, progesterone and estrogen really start to go down. And as they start to get really low, we too can have things like spotting, uh, missed periods. Uh, we can feel really anxious in our body, like we can't get our body to relax. Um, we can have trouble sleeping. We could have hot flashes. If that's you and you haven't completely cycled through menopause yet, you're gonna wanna turn to some fruits like tropical fruits, um, specifically things like papaya and, and uh, pineapple and mango. Um, and if you still have a cycle and you're tracking your cycle, the best time to add these fruits in is right before you actually start your cycle. If you know that your estrogen is really low, do you know that one of the highest fruits for est that will, um, has the highest amount of phytoestrogens, which are plant-based helpful estrogens, are dried apricots. I don't have any dried apricots here, but um, here are some apricots, um, and they're they're hot, the highest fruit you can you can add into your diet. Now you wouldn't want to eat them all the time, but you would add them in like one day, two days to try to bring those estrogen levels up. Blueberries are really good phytoestrogens as well. Okay, so first time when you know you want to feed your good gut bacteria. Second time you're going to add them in when you know your hormones are off. 
Okay, the third time is when you've maybe been doing keto too long. Like I hear this so much. I get in consultations with people where they're like, I started to do keto, I was doing so great, and then all of a sudden it stopped working for me. And if that's you, it's time for you to come out of ketosis and then go back into ketosis. So in those cases, I would want you to come out of ketosis, not by eating a bunch of junk food. I, want, I would want you to come out of ketosis by give, doing what, uh, what nature's given you, you know, add these healthy fruits into your diet and then do that for a couple of days and then go back into ketosis. So we have a 15 day metabolic reset that I do with people and it blows me away how many people come to that reset and they've been getting great res results with keto and the, they, they got stuck and then we go into a, a 15 day experience of cycling fast, going in and out of fast feast op uh, options and boom, it unsticks them. So go watch the videos I did on that. And then again, we're doing more of that in the academy if you wanna dive deeper into this. So first one is you want to feed your good bacteria. Second one, you want to balance your hormones. Third one is you just been in keto too long and you are stuck and not getting the results that you want. Okay. So those are the three times I want you to add these in. And, I, and again, hang in there because I'm going to go through some of the, the different fruits and why I like them. Okay. Two times you do not want to add these fruits in. Okay. If you are brand new to keto, and, you've, and you're like watching this for the first time, I really encourage people brand new to be strict. You gotta experience what keto feels like. So you wanna stay under 50 net carbs, you wanna stay under 50 grams of protein, and you wanna try to get over 60% of your diet coming from good fat. And you wanna measure, you wanna use a Keto Mojo so that you can actually measure your blood sugar and know that your blood sugar is going down and you're getting into ketosis. You don't want to be doing fruits yet. So, and maybe you're one of those people that you've been doing this for six months and you're still not in ketosis. So that's, yeah, I would encourage you to keep at it and to, um, and to fast a little longer um, because that will help. Uh, don't go here. Don't go to these fruits yet, okay? So if you're new or you, don't, you haven't gotten into ketosis yet, don't go to these fruits yet, okay? The, the second scenario that I would really encourage you to not, you, not do the um, fruits in your keto diet is if you're really, really trying to lose weight. And I'm gonna put a little like asterisk with that because if you are somebody who's come to keto and you know you had like 100 pounds to lose, so for you, I wanna encourage you to maybe come out and maybe you'll do some fruits for one day, but then I want you to go right back in. I don't want you to come out for a very long period of time, okay? And then you'll go back to keto. So remember, it's the in and out and in and out. Okay, how do you put this all together? So berries, what I love about berries, I actually just got these at the market, the farmer's market today. I got this whole plate of boysenberries. They're only seasonal for two weeks in my area. So I was like, well, I'm gonna grab that because nature gave these to me for two weeks. So I wanna make sure I'm varying my fruits. Um, and you are going to, you would do this on a feast day. So tonight I'm gonna take this big, Flat, uh, flat of boysenberries, and I'm gonna make a crisp for my family out of it. Um, and tomorrow, I fast. So uh, that's how I go in and out of this. Um, the other time you would really lean into these fruits are for those of you that are the week before your cycle. Doesn't matter if you're perimenopause or you're in childbearing ages, that week from 21 until you actually start your period, lean into the citrus fruits, lean into the berries, especially if you're watching this during summertime. Uh, nature gave us these fruits and I think the, the human body and nature, we are so synergistic. So we wanna lean into to these fruits um, that week before and then for everybody we want to do it at least once a week okay so I hope that's that's clear um, again my channel is about helping you think through this I don't want to spoon feed it for you I want you to kind of think through this concept for you I want you to find that path that's right for you 
Um, so ask questions. If you have any questions based off of this video, put them in there. Um, if this makes sense, if it was helpful, let me know. Um, and if you want to dive deeper into this, you want to interact with me more, join me in my Reset Academy. That's what we're doing with groups of people is helping people take this information and customizing it for them. So, but as always, so grateful for all your support and keep asking me questions. That's how I come up with these videos for you. So let me know if that was helpful. Have an awesome day. If you love this video, I did a great video called Should You Eat Eggs Every Day for Breakfast? So you need them to make things like serotonin and dopamine, the neurotransmitters that give us a good mood balance, make us happy, make us calm, give us joy and satisfaction. The precursors for those neurotransmitters are all inside this little egg.